This is how we treated people when they went on the feminine path, they labeled them as wicked witches. Village goddesses are designed to take care of the specific needs of that particular village. Tripura Sundari is the core goddess of traditional Tantra. I keep getting these mails for invites to events for awakening my inner goddess. I grew up hearing about Durga and Kali, so I'm like, do they really want those goddesses to come awake? But why does nobody ask, why has the goddess gone to sleep in the first place? See, for hundreds of years, the entire world had some connection with honoring the goddess. Native Americans, of course, seeing nature as the mother. And then in Europe, they keep digging up these ancient sculptures that have now been buried under the earth of the mother goddess. The Neolithic Europe was a goddess-centric culture. We have the triple goddesses, various goddess forms in the Middle East, which are obviously not in the picture at all at the moment. So the goddess has been awake and alive for many centuries. She's not asleep. But what's happened is when human women actually started experiencing their own femininity, when they started getting in tune with the cycles of nature or of the moon and started becoming aware of ways to access spirits or heal humanity in so many ways, the church started having problems. The church was probably a bunch of insecure men. They labeled them as wicked witches. I still remember I had gone on a field trip when I was in school in Michigan and we were going to this museum which had all these wooden tools. And this tour guide was like very casually telling us about how each of these tools were used to hang the women and just a very gruesome, painful death. This is how we treated people when they went on the feminine path all over the US and in Europe. Where in the world is there space for something feminine to thrive? This level of scientific, vibrant worship of the feminine, entire communities and cultures who are built around that is something I only found alive in India and especially in Himachal, there are three types of goddess temples. There are the Shakti Stals, it's very popular ones. And then there are temples on top of the mountain that you have to take a lot of effort to go up and see them. And then there are these village goddesses that are designed to take care of the specific needs of that particular village. So this temple is in Nagar Manali. She is more of a village goddess, but established by the king just across the street from his castle. Her name is Tripura Sundari. Tripura Sundari is the core goddess of traditional Tantra. So the fact that these Rajas or kings of Kulu chose her as their presiding deity, I think says a lot about mystical aspects of this region. Legend says that the goddess turned herself into a spider and then designed the temple herself. So the architecture has a web-shaped design. The goddess has 21 masks. She is made with ashtadatu, or the eight elements of metal. There's not a whole lot of English text out there about this temple, but maybe her connection to a spider could also be related to the grandmother spider deity who is associated with healing. In many countries, spiders Spiders are seen as a symbol of witchcraft, and obviously they still are. Those witch hunters did a really good job of making them look evil. They say that witches use these spiders in their herbal brews or poisons, they call it. But see, we don't know. Because in India, I've heard of snake venom being used or transformed into a healing medicine in even mercury which is considered very poisonous being transformed into a very potent substance so i see a cult as a way of transforming what we think as poison into an elixir into something very beneficial and i actually found out about the only spider temple in the entire country and it happens to be in my home state of Kerala. Palliara Sri Bhagavati Temple is filled with spiders and spider webs. 
the prasad or the blessed water that's given has healed people from spider bites and other skin ailments for hundreds of years. Both Kerala and West Bengal are central hub for feminine energy and incredible goddess forms. Color used in most of these goddess temples is red. I did an in-depth exploration on red and made a video about it. Do watch that for more on that. Feminine energy today is mostly understood as developing some qualities, but feminine in its truest essence, this is what keeps me interested in exploring my roots.